All right, today we're gonna head over to my uh, buddy Justin's house. He's making a European mount. I think he did three or four of the ones I have, and he's just gonna walk us through the steps on how to do it. So we're gonna head over to his house and check it out. Okay, first step, I usually start at the back, get under the hide, and run my knife up to about one antler, and start peeling that back, cut the ear off, peel it back, and then work over this side to the antler, peel back, basically work from back to front. There's a million different ways to do it, that's just the way I do it. Just however you can get, you know, just like you're skinning it underneath the hide and just get all the hide off. Again, work past the ear. And I usually start by going over to one side of one of the antlers. Careful not to really hit the antlers with your knife because it will leave a mark. Just cut right around the antler and start peeling it back. Cut through the hide some and peel back. Take the ear off. Start working the other way around the antler. I get enough of them, trust me. I'm surprised if this is only the second one I've done so far. They did like probably 10 of them last year. And if you leave a little bit around the base of the antler, it's no big deal because to cover the whole skull, skull with water when you're boiling, usually that will. That will cook right off too, it's not a big deal for a little bit. These stuff around the eyes is pretty tough though. Once I get down so far, then I'm like starting to pull this the rest of this down off the neck. The eye sockets, the eye hole is a good thing to hold on to and pull a little bit. And just keep turning it and work your way around to get it down off the jaw. When we get to the end here where the nose is, you'll be able to tell it's hard bone going down the front of the face to right around in here where the actual nose starts. You can kind of cut down through this softer cartilage like this. Get the rest of it off. And that's your hide. And that also is good because that leaves a place for water to go to boil out all the junk that's in the nasal cavity that needs to come out. Now this part, you want to take this last section of neck that's still hooked to the deer, and you can see how it kind of flexes a little bit. You can feel in there and see where, kind of where it flexes, and that's where you want to start cutting down. There you can tell is that last part coming up the skull, and right here's the hole the brain stem goes into the brains. It's good to have gloves, especially when you get to the brains. Now next I like to take off the bottom jaw. Usually cut down along it. Throughout this process, you'll hit a lot of bone, so it's good not to use a knife that's important to you because it will get dulled up quick. Now, the jaw, when you start to pull it down, you can see right here. 
as you move the jaw, you can see this right behind the antler that will flex because that jaw runs up through here and behind a piece of bone that comes off the eye and locks in up to there and is connected with muscles. If you cut all around there and loosen it from those muscles and tendons, then you will be able to pull the jaw out this way. Try and get in front of it and behind it, get all around it. You have to do this a few times so you can finally pull it out. But there's tendons that hold the side of the jaw too that you want to cut through. Pops the jaw out. I'm going to cut all this junk off. And there are two little bones in here that will break as you pull it, and you usually can just cut around them. There's one of the bones that broke. Right there's the other one. That's the jaw. And this deer does have all of its adult teeth, so I don't know. Call that a year and a half old buck, I guess. Now, what you want to do, I said not everybody does, but I like to take the eyeballs out. And I just take my knife and just keep cutting around them, trying not to pop them. When they pop them, they're a mess, and then you really can't get the stuff out. You can leave them whole. Just work around it with your knife. And just keep kind of pulling it out until eventually you can get it all out. Everything that holds this, this eye in is pretty hard to cut through. Just be careful with this part. Right behind the eye where the skull is, the, the bone in there is not super thick so you don't want to jam your knife in too hard you can put holes in the skull which isn't a big deal you don't really see it that much but I'm gonna try and keep it as natural as you can again this leaves a place for the water to get into and get all this stuff loosened up and boiled out and it'll come right out because I usually do about 10 a year. This year's not looking like it'll be that. Who knows? A rifle season could explode. And people... <laughs> this guy I'm doing this one for, I've done like, <clears throat> I don't know. I've done a bunch for him. This isn't a business. This is just something I do for fun. I guess my idea of fun is a little skewed. So there's a lot of close action when you're doing this, so you gotta watch your fingers. So I like to use a duller knife. <laughs> so you just cut your finger, you don't cut it off. And again, last step is this hole right here where the brain is. I like to get in there and dig some out. You don't have to get it all, but at least enough to get some water into the skull cavity. And it helps to boil everything out. And again, the more junk you get out at the beginning, the less you got to do after you boil it. Now, a lot of this meat on the outside, though, you can cut stuff off. But honestly, it, it usually all boils up. Sometimes it's nicer to have, like back here, you can grab that whole chunk and rip that whole chunk off. Or actually use a pressure washer on it after post-boil. It usually all blows off pretty easy. But it's inside where you got to dig. That the, the looser it is, the easier it is. And the more the... The more the boiling water hits it, the looser it'll be. First, there's like a little membrane in here. I like to cut up a little bit just to around the hole, clear some room with the knife. This little tight membrane here. Cut that stuff up and then you'll be able to get in there. And this part, usually hold it over here. But I just have a little Twisted up piece of wire that I hooked at the end, twisted it to make it a little more stout. Just get in there and just wiggle it around and just keep trying to dig pieces of it out. And again, I've done them without taking the brains out. You still can get it clean, it's not a big deal, but 
It just makes it a little easier after you boil it. <clears throat> but again, just so you can make enough room for the water to get up in there and boil it real nice. There's, there's a lot more brains up in here than what you think. The hardest part is trying to get, you know, it's all hooked to the wall of the skull. It's, the hardest part is trying to get it loosened off there and then it all breaks apart in mush. So you're just kind of scooping it out essentially is what you're doing. But I've got a pretty good area opened up in here. Enough to where I think a good bit of water can get in there and make it a little easier to boil. This is about as far as you really need to take it before you boil it all out. All this will, will come off pretty easy once it's all, all cooked.